at the end of your Bible there. We've had a couple of weeks away from 2 Peter, but we're trying to work our way through. It's a little bit of a dark sermon tonight. It's about God's judgment, uh, but it's, it, it's encouraging for us to know that uh, God is righteous. God never has a bad day. And it's a, it's a blessing, even when we look at something as serious as God's judgment. Um, 2 Peter chapter 2, and uh, really the whole book, but chapter 2, verse, verse, the couple of first verses there, uh, he warns us about false prophets and false teachers. Uh, he starts off in verse 1, There were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. There's, this is nothing new. There's always been people who don't want to teach the truth. They don't want you to believe the truth. And listen to the next, ver- next words. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. Now, damnable heresies means that if you believe them, you'll go to hell. You won't believe the truth, so you'll believe a lie. And uh, you know, it, it's a terrible, terrible thing that we're, we're talking about here. And he said, they're, they're among us. You know, they're, These are not non-humans or, you know, something that's uh, someone that's not uh, one like us. These are just people. And uh, when he uses that word privily, it means they use deceit. They use craft. Uh, They're tricky. They want you to believe a lie. And uh, the result there, he says, is swift destruction, God's judgment. And uh, one of the worst things about it is not just that they face judgment. Verse 2, many shall follow their pernicious ways. There's people who believe them. You meet them every day. There's people who are not believing the Bible because someone has tricked them and they've believed a lie. Some of them are going door to door trying to get other people to believe a lie and so on. Now, why do they do this? He says there in verse 3, through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Now, there's probably a couple aspects to that, but one is pretty simple. The bottom line is money. Uh, there's people who have started religions just to make money. Uh, but in, in a bigger sense, they want to use you. They want to make merchandise of you. They, they, want, they want something from you. They want to use you. And uh, in chapter 2, at the end of verse 3, he says, Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Uh, God will deal with all of this. Now, you and I, we have to oppose ungodliness and heresy and so on, but we're not the judges. You know, we're not the ones who are, are, are going to uh, put people to, to the test. It's God. And uh, God will deal with all of this in, in righteousness. In uh, chapter 3, verse 9, he says, The Lord is not slack, you know, he particularly labels, uh, concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but as long-suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know, we think, well, why doesn't God deal with that right now? Well, he's not being slack. He's just giving people the opportunity to believe the truth. And uh, we need to know God will deal with uh, all of these things in his time, in the right time, and in the right way. Uh, God's judgment on, on heretics. And he, he gives us then in verses 4 through, I think it's verse 6, three examples of how God has judged in the past. Uh, let's look at those. Uh, let me start reading in verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. So he gives us three examples of, of God's judgment in the past. Uh, the first one there in, in verse 4 is the angels that sinned. This is an interesting one. Uh, we looked at this in 1 Peter chapter 3. I think he gives a, a pretty good explanation there. Uh, 1 Peter 3, verse 19 and 20. He talks about Jesus, how he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. But that's not people, that's, that's demons. Which sometimes were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. So it tells us the time when God did that. It was was before the flood. Uh, While the ark was a preparing, wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water. Uh, 
God has judged angels, and some of them God has put in a place where they can't get out. I don't know how you imprison a demon, but God knows how, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, now, this is obviously not all demons. Uh, we believe from Scripture that about one-third of the, of the angels followed Satan and became fallen angels, demons. Well, most of those are still free. They're still uh, working the earth. Uh, but there were some who uh, we think that were physically involved with people before the flood. And uh, their procreation would have uh, just ruined uh, the earth. And it would have ruined uh, the, the heritage of, of people. Um, but anyway, God, God imprisoned those, uh, those demons. In uh, Jude, verse 6, he, he mentions it again. I'll just read it. Uh, the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness under the judgment of the great day. Now, uh, the point is this. Uh, if God judges angels, God, can ju God will judge us. God judges uh, these beings, and the word if there in verse 4 is not saying maybe he did, maybe he didn't. It's saying if God would do that, he'll also do this. So we need to understand God's judgment is sure. Um, if God judges them, God knows what, what to do with us. God knows what to do with people who are, are heretics and, and so on. The second one he mentions is uh, those at the flood, the people. In verse 5, Spared not the old world. It, it just almost boggles your mind to think of that situation where the world was, was so wicked. Uh, we've read it before, but God's description of that in Genesis chapter 6 uh, is this, Genesis 6, 5. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's amazing. It's hard to imagine a world worse than what we are now, but it was. Later on, he said, the earth was corrupted before God and the earth was filled with violence. It was just awful what was going on. And God brought it to an end. God judged the world. Um, and, and the thing we need to understand is this wasn't people who couldn't believe. These were people who refused to believe. The reason we know that is Noah believed. In Hebrews, it talks about how Noah condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. The, the way he condemned the world was just by believing God. Some of you have probably experienced that. If you live for the Lord, the world feels very condemned. Oh, holier than thou are you, you know? And all you're doing is just trying to follow the Lord. You have nothing to do with them. Uh, Noah condemned the world because he showed that you could believe the Lord. God, God's judgment is always right. Uh, God judged the world by fire. It says in 2 Peter 3, verse 6, Someday God will judge the world. I said that wrong. God judged the world by water. God will judge the world by fire. In uh, 2 Peter 3, and um, verse, verse 6 there, Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished, but the heavens and the earth which are now... By the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now, there's coming a day when, like the flood, the whole earth will, will be consumed by, by fire instead of water. Uh, in, in 2 Peter 3, verse 11, he says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? He, he, the point he's making here. Heresy, all these things are going to come, but God knows how to judge. God will judge that. We don't have to worry about the wrong. We just need to believe the right. Like God judged the angels. Like God judged at the flood. And the third example he gives is Sodom and Gomorrah there in verse 6. Turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Man, you know, nothing left. Um, and he says he was making them an example. For people to see that uh, we cannot spurn the righteousness of God. God will judge. Uh, remember where this started in verses 1 through 3 there? False prophets, false teachers, uh, trying to lead us away from, from the truth. Uh, and the Bible says that 
God's judgment, uh, the judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For, and then he starts in, if God didn't spare the angels, God didn't spare the world, if God didn't spare Sodom and Gomorrah, God knows how to judge what's going on now. And uh, we don't have to be discouraged as we look around. I know that's hard sometimes. Uh, you may not want to watch the news too often. But uh, uh, we need to understand, God will judge in, in righteousness. God knows how to judge. Now, there's a, there's a certain terror there. In Hebrews, he says, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That's right. It, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But, you know, there's also joy. Because while we see God's judgment, we also see God's deliverance. Did you notice uh, there in, um, in verse 5, he spared not the old world, but saved Noah. Noah was delivered. I, I found it interesting, he uses the word delivered twice. One of them is the, the ones that are delivered to hell, and the other one's the ones that delivered, uh, was it uh, Lot, I think it was, was delivered uh, anyway. Uh, being delivered doesn't always, isn't always a good thing. You can be delivered to hell as well. But God knows how to deliver us from, uh, from hell and from judgment. God knows how to judge. And as I was looking at this, I realized one of the things you see in this book is that God is long-suffering. In other words, he's not in a hurry. God doesn't say, oh, that Bill Brown, he sinned against me again. That's the fourth time today. Probably more like, that's the 40th time today. Uh, you know, God's not, not hasty. Uh, God is righteous. He's long-suffering, like we read in 2 Peter uh, 3, 9. He's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. Um, God is thorough. Uh, he has perfect discrimination. You know, nowadays the word discrimination is only used in a bad way. Oh, discrimination. Listen, discrimination can be a good thing. If something bad is happening and you have discrimination, you'll say, oh, no, I don't want to be part of that. God has perfect discrimination. The Bible uses the word twice here, the words, he spared not. God doesn't just, he's not careless. He doesn't say, oh, well, don't worry about it. No, God will deal with every bit of sin and righteousness. Now, he's not careless. He's not hasty. And he's not mean and vindictive. Uh, God is merciful. You know, all the time that sin was going on in Noah's time, God provided, he calls Noah here a preacher of righteousness. God gave them the message. They could have believed. God gave them the opportunity to believe. You know, I, I see people pass through, through our church, and I think, you know, God gave them the opportunity to be saved, and they've refused it. They've decided, no, not for me. Man, what a... What a terrible thing. When they stand before God, there'll be no excuse. Uh, I've often heard preachers say, uh, when they present the gospel, uh, listen, if you don't receive this, uh, I'm gonna be, uh, I'll be your worst enemy in heaven because you won't be able to say you never heard. But if you'll, if you'll believe the message, I'll, I'll be your best friend in heaven <laughs> because you'll say, I heard it from pastor so-and-so. Uh, and, and it's true. Uh, we'll have no excuse when we stand before God, but we know that God will judge in mercy. You know, Noah lived in a day of rebellion against God, and yet God provided a preacher of righteousness. Now, was Noah perfect? No, <laughs> he was not. Uh, you read uh, Genesis chapter 9 there. It's a very sad uh, chapter. But the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 that he lived by faith. And, and you know, you and I, uh, living by faith, we're not going to be perfect. But we're not going to have... Uh, we're not going to have a life free from, from problems and sin. Uh, and neither was Noah. But God is merciful, and God values uh, our lives, and God gives us opportunities to believe Him. Lot was the other one mentioned there in, uh, well, Sodom and Gomorrah. Let me read uh, verse 7. It says, He delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man... Dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. God is merciful. And it, even in Sodom and Gomorrah, here was Lot. Now understand, that word just in verse 7 doesn't mean only. 
It's exactly the same word as in verse 8, where it's two words, righteous man. Same words. It's saying, God delivered that righteous man lot. Now, he had his problems. He wasn't perfect. Uh, the Bible says there that he had vexed his soul. Some of you, have, we've experienced that. You know, just living in the world, hearing people swear. You know, as a man, you just can't hardly go anywhere without uh, women uh, dressing in such a way as to make it hard for you. And, uh, you know, things on, uh, if you have a TV and you turn it on, I had, the other day I turned it on, the first thing I heard was somebody swearing at me. Turn on my car radio. I heard a foul word. Man, I, I contacted the radio station. They said, well, we, we warned you at the beginning of the program that, that there would be foul language in this program. Well, that's fine if, for them, but it's not fine for people who have to hear it. Anyway, I don't want to get off on that. But uh, what I'm saying is we live in a wicked world. And if we're not careful, like Lot, it can vex our soul. That word means wear us down. That's why being part of a church is so important. That's why your personal devotions are important. That's why standards of godliness and, and spending time with, with Christians is important. Uh, you need to have a rest for your soul. Um, sin can wear you down. To, to me, one of the saddest chapters is about Lot. Genesis 19. Don't, don't look at it now. But, uh, you know, some terrible things that happened to him. And, you know, as he went out of Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible says the angels led him out by the hand. And his wife evidently had left her heart. Her, her love was still in Sodom and Gomorrah. And God had told them not to look back, and she looked back. And that was the end for her. You know, she was willing physically to go, but her heart was still there. And so Lot still believed God, even though uh, much of his family didn't, even though his, his wife didn't. Uh, he took God's way of escape. You know, God always gives us a way of escape. He tells us that in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10. There's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Um, God is the perfect judge. And as we think about judgment, we need to know uh, he's not going to be hasty. He's not going to be careless. He's not going to be mean and vindictive. And he, he's not saying, oh, I just can't wait to punish these people. No, he's saying, I'll, I'll put it off. I'll put it off. I'll put it off. He's got his time for it. And he's not doing it as a reaction to us. He's not hasty. He's not careless. He's not mean. He's long-suffering. And uh, God is, is righteous and just. Uh, there's so many scriptures. Let me, let me share a few. Uh, Psalm 116, verse, uh, verse 5 The Lord preserveth, the, no, that's verse 6. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. Uh, we have a righteous God. He'll always do right. The Bible tells us that he will judge the wicked. Now, we look at that and we think, yeah, he'll, he'll judge other people. No, he'll judge the wicked. Psalm 11, verse 4. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked in him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. You know the Bible says that God is angry at sin every day. There's never a time when God is okay with sin. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and an horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. Listen, you can count on it. God will judge sin. But we can also count on the fact that God will forgive those who ask. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Aren't you glad God is righteous? God's faithful. God is just. Uh, we know that God will keep his word. Uh, Paul put it this way in, in Titus chapter 1 and, and verse 2. Uh, he says, in, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. God will keep his promise regarding salvation. God will keep his promise regarding judgment. That's what he's saying there in, in 2 Peter 2.9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. God will deal with it. God will deal with it in, in righteousness. 
Uh, the Bible tells us that, that he will reward the righteous. Now, that should cause a question to spring up in your mind. How can he do that? The Bible says there's none righteous. No, not one. Well, in that same chapter, that's Romans chapter 3 and, and verse 10. In that same chapter, the Bible tells us the secret is faith. Just like Lot, just like Noah. They weren't perfect. They weren't righteous in themselves and that they'd never done wrong. But they believed God. In Romans 3.22, says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, the righteousness of God, the righteousness of Christ, we receive it by faith, not by works. You know, religion is based on works. I was talking to somebody this week, and, you know, the, the basic difference in religion or in, yeah, I'll use that word, is there's a religion of works. That's most religions in the world. I don't know what percentage. Join us, do this, live this way, maybe you'll get to heaven. But God's way is by faith. It's through grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. And, uh, you know, what a wonderful thing that is. Uh, we can't be good enough. God's righteous judgment will always see, yeah, that's a sinner. Yeah. Yeah, it's like going into a bakery shop and oh, they only have one kind of thing. <laughs> Everything is the same. Well, when God looks at us, all he can see are, are sinners until we trust Christ. And then we're in Christ. Then he sees Christ. Now, our righteousness has to come from a different source. Uh, there's a verse in Philippians. Let me read that. Philippians 3, verse 9 get here. He says that he wants to win Christ. He wants to be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Listen, if we try to keep the law, we're always going to fall short. There'll be times when we just won't make it. Now, we should try and live good lives and, and keep the law and so on, follow the speed limit, you know, do right. But that's not going to get us to heaven. The Bible says it's by faith. It's through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God, by faith. We have to get our righteousness from a righteous source, and there's only one, and that's God. Aren't you glad He's the one who's going to judge us? Now that's, that's not a comfort if you don't know Christ. But there's comfort in knowing that God never changes. God never uh, says something and does, does the other. You and I might. But God never does. God always does right. God knows how to judge. He will judge the righteous. The Bible tells us that judge is Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and uh, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Jesus is the judge. In fact, in, he said that in John chapter 5 and, and verse 22. The Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's, this is not going to be some judgment that, uh, of, of a, a God who you know, lives out there somewhere and doesn't understand, like, like the world would picture it. Uh, this is the God who became a man and who suffered all the temptations that you and I suffer, yet without sin. He knows what we've gone through, and He died for our sins. He's the one who offers us uh, that forgiveness. He's also the one who will be the judge. And the, the rule he will use is this book. It's the Bible. Jesus said in John chapter 12 and verse 48, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I've spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Uh, this is the rule book. And we need to understand that. It's not our ideas. It's not the world's philosophies. Now, if you ask the average person how to get to heaven, you might hear anything. I mean, it could, they, could, they could tell you anything. I've been amazed sometimes. But God says there's only one way. It's through faith in Jesus Christ. You know, we're so foolish sometimes. Uh, human beings. Um, look at verse uh, 10 there of, of 2 Peter chapter, chapter 2. He 
talks about how he's, he's able to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Now, that word presumptuous, it means shameless, daring. I, I've been amazed in, in my life how chicken-hearted people are for the Lord, and yet that same person will go out and, man, they're bold as a lion for Satan. And maybe it's because they're drunk. But uh, yeah, people will do some amazing things for sin. Well, they'll stand up and be counted. But you, you, they come to church and, and, and they're talking about you know, following the Lord. Man, they're, uh, they're weak as water sometimes. Now, I've seen the opposite as well. People that turn away from the world and, and serve the Lord. But uh, people are so, we're so foolish many times as to what our standard is. Um, many people ignore God. Psalms, he said, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. You can read that as well. The fool hath said in his heart, no, God. <laughs> you know, what a foolish thing it is to say no to God. Uh, Peter did that. You, you know that? You know, as God lowered that thing, gave him a, a vision. He, he said, not so, Lord. <laughs> listen, no and Lord don't go together. Uh, we need to listen to what God says. God is the one who will judge us. Uh, people make up their own way about eternity. I was telling somebody, quite often I get people, when I'm talking to them at the door, they'll say, oh, we have our own religion. <laughs> and I always feel like saying, oh, when did you start your own religion? <laughs> uh, they don't mean that usually. Uh, maybe some of them do. But you know how foolish it is to think that we can just decide what, what's right and what's wrong and how to get to heaven. Uh, I've had people say, well, when I stand before God, boy, I'm going to say, I'm going to ask him. Uh, listen, you'll say nothing. Revelation talks about how the world would flee away from God if it could, but there'll be nowhere to hide. I've heard people say, well, I'm not afraid to die. Well, that's all right if you know, if you know Christ. But you know, they're, they're doing things now to, to kill people, and, and people are committing suicide and so on, and the devil laughs because they have this terrible life, and they kill themselves, and they wake up in hell. You know, what, a, what a foolish thing to do, to, to think that, uh, somehow they can work out what's the decision, the, the right, right way to know about eternity. And the most common thing I hear is, well, I've been good. Listen, everybody knows they've not been good. Let's be honest, don't we? We all know there's some time we've said or done or been the wrong thing. I mean, how ridiculous is that? I've been good. <laughs> and yet that's the most common answer you hear when you ask people, do you think you'll, you'll go to heaven? Yeah, I've been good. I've talked to people in prison. Yeah, I've been good. One guy said, I wouldn't be here except that, you know, I had drugs and alcohol both. And if I'd only had drugs or alcohol, I'd have been all right. But, you know, boy, that combination, that just got me. It wasn't his fault, of course. You know, uh, we're so foolish when it comes to, to wickedness. Listen, God is not deceived by any of that. God knows uh, the human heart. Uh, there was a, an account in Luke 13 where people had been killed in a tragedy. A wall had fallen and many people had been killed. And people were asking, oh, were those particularly wicked people that God killed them? And Jesus' answer was, no, and unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Boy, that wasn't the soft answer they wanted, was it? Uh, you see, we're all the same before God. We're all sinners. And we have to come to Him by faith to receive His grace. Uh, the only way we'll stand before God and not be condemned to hell is to have confessed that we're sinners and to have received Jesus as our Savior. Uh, that verse, 2 Peter 2.9, it, it's just so telling. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Listen, that's an encouragement to us as Christians. And to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. God is the righteous judge. Uh, the question tonight is not about God. It's not, is God going to do the right thing? It's, are we going to do the right thing? Are you right with God? Uh, do you know the Savior? There in 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, uh, he says this, this, he's writing to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you know the Savior? If you don't, you need to know him tonight. Uh, I've said this many times. You know, people step out into eternity that never expected to go that day. 
We don't always know the day of our death. Some people say, well, you know, before I die, I'll, I'll trust the Lord. Well, you know, sometimes you, you die the day before you, you thought, and uh, it, it's too late. Do you know the Savior? If you're saved, are you a saved person that's allowed yourself to be vexed by the world? You know, as we read about Lot, Lot was vexed by the world, worn down. His life was a bit messed up because he'd been so uh, involved in the world. Let me encourage you. Uh, seek your rest and help in the Lord. Uh, be careful. Uh, 2 Peter 2, verse, verse 7 there. Uh, he delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Uh, Dwelling among them, seeing and hearing, he vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Uh, be careful what you hear. Be careful what you see. Uh, be careful how you spend your time. Uh, we're living in a world where time is so strange anymore. I uh, heard some people today talking about, uh, you know, the merits of how much time should you spend on your phone. Um, listen, live a real life. Have some times when it's quiet when nobody is talking to you but the Lord. <laughs> Don't take every spare moment and have something in your ears. Let the Lord have the opportunity to speak to you. Seek Him out on purpose. Listen, have times in the morning and during the day and at night uh, when you, 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 you read His Word and when you talk to Him. If you wake up in the night, talk to the Lord. Listen, He's, he's the only one who's waiting for a conversation with you. <laughs> nobody else is. Uh, don't call me if you wake up at 2 in the morning. Well, if, you know, if the house is on fire or something, call the, call the fire department, then call me. But uh, uh, you know, talk to the Lord. Uh, let Him calm your heart and give you the solace. Uh, I like that word that, that you need. Are you a saved person that's allowed yourself to be vexed by the world? Uh, 2 Peter 3, verse 1. I'll quit with this. He says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. He said, I want to stir you up. We're living in a wicked world. Yeah, there's all kinds of heretics and people teaching wrong things. Listen, we need to be stirred up to be right with God. Uh, later on in, in verse 14, he says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Uh, God can help us. God can give us the peace in our heart. It's called the fruit of the Spirit, isn't it? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Uh, God wants that in your life. God is working that in your life if you're saved. Don't let the world, don't let the noise of the world uh, have you feel like it's not there when it is if you're saved. Uh, go to the Lord for, for the help that you need. Well, uh, I better quit there. I thought we'd close with the song. Uh, it's page 161, but let's, let's just spend a little bit of time in, in prayer before we do that. Uh, maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart. Maybe there's some things vexing your soul that you need to change. Maybe you need to trust Christ as your Savior. I, I don't know what your, your need might be, but uh, let's just spend a moment in, in prayer and, and think about this and talk to the Lord. Father, we do come before you and ask that you'd Help us in our hearts to have the peace that you want us to have, the peace that passes understanding. Lord, if there are those here tonight that are not saved, that you'd help them to see that. Lord, help them to see that they're seeking what only you can give from other sources. They're looking in the wrong places. Help them to look to you who alone can save. Father, I pray that you'd help us to have the, the fruit of your spirit as the defining part of our life. And Lord, that you'd help us as a church to be the salt and light we should be and help us as individuals and parts of our families to be uh, the blessing that we should be. Lord, help us to understand that you will judge uh, wickedness, you will judge righteousness, and you'll do it perfectly. And uh, that we can, uh, we can have our sins forgiven, that we can know you and be at peace with you. Father, thank you for your goodness and love. Help us to be diligent. pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I think we just sing a couple of verses of page 161. It's the song, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling, Come Home. Why don't we stand as, as we sing? <laughs>